Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK into your homes. Welcome to mine. Um, please share, like and subscribe. And for those of my existing subscribers, thanks for your comments and your feedback and your questions and your emails. Today, I wanted to talk about foreigners, and um, it was inspired by this book I was reading, or I am reading. It's called The Purpose Driven Life, and it's by a guy called Rick Warren. Apparently, it's an award-selling book. I've had it for years and years. I bought it while I was in America, and I came down, looked on my bookshelf, and picked it up, and I thought, oh, this looks interesting. Anyway, it was talking about how we're all on this earth temporarily and um, we, shouldn't get, we shouldn't get too attached to the earth. And it was talking about people being strangers because we're only here temporarily. In fact, it called us foreigners. He said, everyone is a foreigner. And I thought about that. I thought, that is true. Everyone is a foreigner until you get to know them and that applies from your mother your wife i mean until you get to know your mum she's actually a stranger isn't she and that's the closest person you can get to but until you get to understand and know that that person is your mum she's a stranger and that applies to wives and that applies to sisters and it applies to husbands and it applies to siblings they're all strangers and the definition of a foreigner is someone who is unknown someone who is strange it doesn't say someone of a different race it doesn't say someone of a different color the definition of a foreigner is where is it When you... Oh, I can't find it now. Yeah, I don't know where the definition now is. Anyway, you can look it up. But it def all it says is that it's someone different, someone unknown. That's what it says. So, my point is, if everyone is a foreigner... And you have to say that because until you get take time to get to know them, that is what they are. Why is it viewed so negatively? And the weird thing is, is that that is why people are treated so badly in certain situations, because they see people as foreign. They don't take time to get to know them. They don't get time to understand. They don't listen to them. So they're foreign. And so they're foreign. But they forget that they were foreign at one point. Now, supposing when they met their wives, and their wives were a stranger at that time, and they, that their wives treated them the way that they treat some people, if they're the ones that treat people who they who they're not who they who's different from them, if they treat them differently or disparagingly, just supposing that was how their wife or their sister treated them, because until their wife met them and they were able to bond they were strangers they were foreigners so what is the difference tell me what is the difference and you know what um is the sad thing the sad thing is that that is the reason why there is all this hype about illegal immigration and all this kind of stuff and you know deaths the, um, I read just yesterday or the day before, uh, who was it that died? Hubert Howard, 59 years old. He came here at the age of three and he died last week. And you know why he died? Because of paperwork. Never left the country, you know. But because of paperwork, stressed to death. Similarly, Dexter Bristol, Dexter Bristol, he died um, age 68. He had been here since he was eight years old. He'd been here 60 years, 
stressed to death. Ethiopian refused health care. She died last month, aged 39. What about those from the Chagos Islands who, because of technicalities, are being deported because they're different? Technically, they should be. They should be here. Yes, they're foreigners. But it's the way that foreigners are viewed in this country. They're not, they don't look at people who are the same colour as themselves as foreign. Unless they've got an accent, of course. But even then, when you think about the Irish accent, the Scottish accent, do you call them foreigners? When you think about the Birmingham accent or you think about the Manchesterian accent, do you consider them foreign? So what? how do you come to the conclusion who to discriminate against, who to treat unfairly, who to abuse? How do you come to that conclusion? You know, there's been um, 14 suicides in the detention centre. 35 deaths, um, 30, no, 36 deaths. A Jamaican died um, just last week, 35 years old. Screaming for help, they ignored him. There's a Rule 35 too where the, the detention officials are supposed to notify detainee, the, the notify authorities where if they think that detainees are suicidal. They don't, they don't notify them. They just allow them to kill themselves. Why? Because they're different. Why? Because they're foreign. That's the only reason. The reason why they're discriminating, being cruel, humiliating is because they're foreign. If they for one moment looked at themselves as being foreign because they were at some point, they might even be able to empathise with other people. But they don't consider themselves foreign. And when they don't consider themselves foreign, you get situation like Yarlswood, you get the situation like Brookhouse, you get traffic victims being victimised, you get the Home Office paying out £250,000 for unlawful deportations because people are treating others as foreigners. I think people should think about that a little bit, you know. And I was thinking about the 1.2 uh, million illegal immigrants at the time broadcasted a couple of days ago. How are those people illegal? Do they say? No, they don't. They don't say that thousands and thousands are waiting for their documentation to be approved because the Home Office is dragging their feet. Oh no, they don't say that. They don't say that all the thousands that they've got in detention centres, that they had to actually, they've only deported half of them because the other half they had to let them go because they're in, their, they're in the detention centres unlawfully. They don't say that. Yet all those figures are being collated and made to build up this 1.2 illegal immigrants. They should, they should have, be able to break it down and say who exactly is illegal and why are they illegal. We know the Windrushian scandal. We know that there are still hundreds, possibly thousands of people who are legitimately in the country and just because they don't have that piece of paper to say that they came here and they, they came here at such and such a date. Who the hell is going to keep paperwork from 19 bloody 50 or 1948, 1950, 1960? Who's going to keep paperwork? And it's not like, if, it's not like white people. We don't go travelling every year. 
we're quite happy staying put, maybe just getting together with friends. I mean, a lot of the younger people, yes, they're traveling, but the older generation, they aren't up on a boat and on a plane every year. That's not their thing. They do other things to enjoy themselves. So they're not likely to be able to have to get a passport. So what have they got to prove? And the th what my point is, is that they're being classified under the label of illegal immigrants. I bet if they did a proper um, recording, it'd be half that number. Maybe not even half. But I just think it's a shame. And I think that people should really look at themselves and say, you know what? You're right, you know, even if you go for a new job. When you go for a new job and you don't know anybody in that workplace, you feel like a foreigner. If you go to a strange country for a holiday, you feel like a foreigner. And it's the same like in England. If you, are in, if you just met somebody, they are foreign to you. And the fact that you take time to talk to them, you know, build rapport, um, you, you, grow, you, you learn to understand them, they no longer become foreign to you. And that is the way of the world. If people took time to talk, to understand, to um, share information, they would no longer be foreign. I've been amongst the most racist people. And yet, once they get to break that barrier down, that fear, they realise they're not so bad. Then, you know, it's not going to happen with everybody because everybody's got different mannerisms. They're, but the same is with any race, any culture. You get some white people who are placid, you get some white people who are aggressive. If you think about the upper middle class and then you think of um, those skinheads and, you know, the, how they used to behave, they were quite terrifying. And yet you have the other, you have the other end of the spectrum. It was the same like black people or Asian people. You have the docile and you have the aggressive or the passionate. But once you get to know people and you get rid of that fear and realise that we're all foreign together and we're all temporary, we're only here for a time, it should make a difference. We shouldn't be at each other's throats. So I'm just asking you to sleep on it. Just think about, you know, why, if you are one of those people who are antagonistic against foreign people, why that is, when you know at one point you were foreign to your wife, you were foreign to your brother, you were foreign to your work colleagues, you were foreign to a, your, your, the shop attendant down the road, who you now friendly with. You was foreign to the bar, the barman, until, you got to, until he got to know you. Just think about it. That's what I'm asking. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.